What we have in the EU, I think that's quite unique. Like, do we have a common European drug policy? No, we don't. It is not anything like the agricultural policy that we have. Do we need one? For me, that's still an open question. But what we do have is a rather unique system that in the form of action plans and strategies has been there for more or less 15 years now. What we, what we hope from this, uh, from this um, process will come out is that a new commitment in uh, assessing, a new commitment in understanding, a new commitment in, uh, in measuring uh, activities and progress, and, uh, and basically a new commitment in, uh, in, um, in, in collecting data, if I can say, as we do, as the European Union has been able to do in the last 10 years. Uh, the, the voice that we need more Europe in drug policy certainly is true for, uh, for, uh, for the approach we have taken, for a balanced approach, for an evidence-based policy to, to collect data and to uh, take decisions Upon, upon the information we have been able to, to, to raise from, from the floor. We need some uh, global approach in order to put all together the uh, different indicators and to have a framework where we can put all the data we can get and to propose a global, uh, well, there is the globalization we uh, want to globalize the uh, evaluation, the approach to uh, evaluation, to drug policy evaluation. Perhaps one of the, this is one of the areas which we could work on together, increasing the amount of information about the quality of the data, quite apart from improving the quality of the data themselves. Maios Matsakis is a Cypriot member of the European Parliament from the ALDI group as well. And we're happy to hear from him now. This drug monitoring center has been in existence for a number of years now. Did you say 13 years, I think, or thereabouts? And you said it has 100 people working there. And basically, <clears throat> um, after 13 years of work of 100 people, you haven't told us very much. I am none the wiser today, after listening to you, and this is not personal, but you represent this drug monitoring center, than I was half an hour ago before I came to this meeting. So I think it's, a, it's been a complete waste of time and money investing millions of euros in this monitoring center. That's, that's my personal view. But I do wonder, perhaps this is a question to the Commission, to what extent um, the data is uh, read with, with um, objectivity by decision makers uh, and to what extent prejudice um, and uh, entrenched views continue to dominate over objective interpretation of the data. We have to change because our campaign against drugs has failed. Why? Because they are stronger. This is a multinational power. Uh, drugs are grown all over the world. And this is managed by invisible hands. We can only see the tip of the iceberg. They make huge profits. And this is what drives the whole drugs traffic. Huge profits. It's difficult to combat something that, we, that makes so much money. The years 2008 and, and 2009 are crucial for the future of the international drug policy. Uh, it is again an opportunity for the member states, uh, civil society and NGOs to propose ways for a better and more effective legal framework uh, and a framework to face effectively, more effectively, the drugs issue. The first thing that we need is a better 
analysis of the problem, a better theory. I think there almost is no theory, or in as far as there is a theory, it is still the same as exactly in around 1912, that if only you prohibit the substance and you fight the users and the use and the trade, that then, well, maybe it will not be eradicated, but it will certainly diminish. In the UN drug control system, their voice is not heard, they are not properly involved in decision-making processes. Uh, and if you uh, contrast this with other UN uh, uh, bodies like uh, UNAIDS or, or WHO, they have very good procedures to involve uh, NGOs and civil society, while the drug control uh, institutions have no uh, proper uh, uh, procedures to do the same. So I think uh, 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 the European Union has to uh, uh, promote new mechanisms to involve uh, NGOs in de uh, decision making in UN uh, forums. Especially, this is especially true for INCB, for example, the International Narcotic Control Board, which is working in an ivory tower in isolation from, from, uh, from civil society. And amongst other things, has created a trade worth two trillion pounds, trillion pounds over the last 10 years, and provided significant momentum behind the transmission of HIV AIDS and brought horror to some of the most disadvantaged people on earth. Which is quite something for a policy that claims to reduce production, supply and use and harm. Why don't we have the data? The reason we don't have it is because governments don't want to do it. The reasons they don't want to do it is because they don't want to expose prohibition to scrutiny. Because if they do, it will be shown to be cost ineffective, well-being ineffective, ineffective on every single indicator you would care to mention. There is a political block to exposing policy generally, but specifically prohibition to any scrutiny whatsoever. And I can cite you numerous examples from the UK where the government has avoided scrutinizing prohibition, and where it has, it has deliberately hidden the evidence and, and made sure that the public don't get hold of it. Uh, indirect female sex workers, you will see that all of those graphs are coming down. Ties knew how to deal with sexually transmitted HIV epidemic, but if you look at HIV rates among injecting drug users, th those rates are unacceptably high. And as you can see, the numbers are not going down. And I don't want to make a point that Thailand is the worst country in the world when it comes to drug policy. It's a very, in some way, it's a very representative country. I think that um, I, uh, I, sh I share your uh, concern about the, the position of the Netherlands. Actually, I'm, I may be even slightly more pessimistic than you, than you are, because the whole point is if you want to get ministers, i.e. government representatives, to push something forward, I wouldn't count on it too much. I mean, governments and ministers aren't known for their cur courage on the whole. Um, that they, they are rarely sort of front runners. And the thing is, in the Netherlands, for years, we've, we've had, you know, pretty good policies um, as, because we, at some point, didn't treat uh, drugs use or drugs abuse, rather, as a moral issue anymore. But we took a very pragmatic approach. But we now have a government which has made, um, um, you know, morality the cornerstone of its coalition program. So I don't see the Dutch government, to be honest, I don't see the Dutch government to be the champion uh, of this issue. Um, so, but I think your, your suggestion about uh, uh, bringing on NGOs on, on delegations, that might be much more helpful.